When we were talking about our technique exercises, there was one breakdown that we did where we were breaking down the pattern into fourths. So we're always skipping one, which turns out in the pentatonic scale to give you mostly fourths like this. Now I can do this same thing, but do it on two strings. For example, the upper two strings. Now that's a shape that gives me a bunch of opportunities for really cool fills. You can do things, for example, like one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. So three plus three plus two makes eight, so that gives you the opportunity to play in a steady rhythm. But you could also, for example, do things like this. Now that works great on a groups on on like a, a group of three. So, for example, in a twelve eight or six eight or for a shuffled groove. One two three one two three one two three. But you could also count it out and lay like a group of three over a rhythm of four. For example, if I start with my D here and I go D G D E A E and then keep going up, then I have. One E, one E, and a two E, and a three E, and a four E, and a one. Then I come out with my G up here on top. So for example, if the chord is a G. So there's some fun stuff that we can do with these kind of shapes. And again, if I break it down, if I break a pentatonic down into, uh, in s in into its fourths, I will always have fourths, but I have one fifth, uh, one, sorry, one third in it. So it will be fourth, third, third with the root on the bottom and then everything else will be fourths. Now I could do the same thing with fifths. If I break them down in fifths, they are all fifths except for when the root is on top then I'll have a minor six. And of course you can play these things as double stops as fills or you can play, you know, patterns like this. So just to mention that there's just some really fun opportunities for cool fills. Now these fills you need to use with good taste because they draw a lot of attention to themselves. And if there's a melody happening or if there is, you know, somebody soloing, you might step on toes. So in a band context, always, always use good taste. You want to also be aware of good fingering for these kind of shapes. And the you can do cool things with slides, for example. And if I know I'm going to be using, it's mostly fourths, but there's this one third in there when I have the root on under my second finger. Um, I want to be able to reach the third right here. So I think ahead and I start this whole um, fill with my second finger and then it gives me the opportunity to reach that third right here. And then I just keep going, you know. And you can also do things like this, for example. So at some point you'll have to shift into that other finger if you're planning on doing something like that. But this just to mention that fingering is really crucial with these things and you always want to kind of think ahead what, what might be a situation that I want to run into. And if I start here, and I'm not going to be able to reach my third here, so I want to start thinking ahead so that I'm ready for it. All right, let's make some music with it. Here is a funky track in G major. with these kind of shapes, move them around, always be mindful of how they fit into the rest of the song. But fourths and fifths, 
used up on those two higher upper strings um, are a lot of fun to create some cool fills with. So get to it. <laughs> 